today I'm reading in the Gospel of John. I've been reading through the book of John, uh, one of my favorites. I love reading through, talking about, and contemplating on who Jesus is and our relationship with him and his love for us. So I've been working my way through the book of John again, and today I find myself in John chapter 13. It starts off like this. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. I read that and immediately I'm like, whoa, he knew his time had come. What would that be like to know, to know my time has come, your time has come. We've been in this world for, I've been in this world now for 63 years, but I'm in the world. What would it be like for me to know my time has come? Would I rejoice? Would I be happy? Would I be excited? Would I be afraid? What would it be? The last year or so, uh, my wife and I have talked about the idea of when our time is done here on earth, it's not that our life is over or that we die and that's it. No. My wife thought about this idea. It's a transition. It's simply a transition to another world. Some time ago, I, I read in one of the Gospels also where Jesus was saying, I think to his disciples, maybe to Peter in particular, he was saying, I have been preparing another kingdom for you since the beginning of time. In other words, what you see here is nothing to what's coming. I've been preparing a whole new world. And one day, you're going to be there with me. So I'm looking at Jesus, and I'm thinking, he knows his time is up. His time is up. And then I thought, oh, my word. What mixture of feelings he has to be having here. On the one hand, he's thinking, I'm going back to be with the Father. I've been here on the earth now for 33 years. I've been missing his presence for 33 years. I can't wait to be back with my Father once again and be in home once again. So part of me has to be bubbling up full of joy and anticipation as he anticipates thinking once again about being home with his father. The second thing he's thinking, I can't imagine him not thinking this, is I'm going to say goodbye to these close, close friends, my disciples, the men and women friends that I've made that we've shared life together with, and my mom here on earth, I'm gonna be saying goodbye to them and leaving them, leaving them alone in a sense, perhaps. And yet, again, another uh, excited feeling because he's gonna be giving, he's, they're not gonna be alone because he's sending them the Holy Spirit to be with him. So a very part of who he is, he gets to impart to them his spirit, the Holy Spirit, and so they won't be alone, and yet they won't be together. There's, again, such mixtures of feelings. And then has to be thinking about the fact that the next 36 hours, 40 or 40, however many are, the next day or two are going to be horrible days. Important, crucial, the most important in all of history on some level, and yet days of horror. And he has to, he's facing those and he knows he's going to be in such anguish over them. And we know that he comes to the place of having so much anguish at one point that he's sweating blood. He's so tense at one point crying out to the father, is there any other way? And at one point on the cross, he's going to be saying, God, my father, you have, why have you forsaken me? He's going to feel utterly, utterly alone. 
and abandoned even by his friends. So what mixtures of feelings he has to be feeling here? That leads me thinking about this. Often, really often, I feel mixtures of feelings. Very significant mixtures of feelings. And I know you do as well. Life is that way. There's so much going on. On the one hand, we're experiencing joy with new life perhaps in our family and sadness with someone passing. We're, we're experiencing hardship or sadness and yet excitement over something new and there's just back and forth, all kinds of mixtures of emotions. That's the reality of our world here on earth. All kinds of mixtures of emotions. In the past, you may have heard me say, that one of the ways that I think in the term, I just use the term ambivalence. It's when we're experiencing one or more opposing emotions all at the same time. And at first it seems like this seems so terrible. How do we even do this? How do we handle this? It feels like we're kind of crazy. Well, the reality is we just feel all these different emotions all at once. And it's a very real part of every one of our lives. It was a part of Jesus's life here, no doubt. What do we do? How do we handle those moments when life is just so full of all kinds of emotions? Well, interestingly enough, we see here, it says, the next verse, it was time for supper. <laughs> what do we do? Well, on some level, we just keep living and we do what we have to do. It's time for supper. We kind of have to kind of put all that stuff, just kind of pack it in, hold it tight, put it aside a little bit, and time to have dinner. So we move on to some of the next things that are happening in our world. There's so much more in just these opening few verses. It says here also that uh, it was time, he knew it was time to leave the world, return to the Father, and he showed the disciples the full extent of his love to the very end. Oh, how I want to do that. And I'm sure you do as well. You want to be the best lover possible to the very end of your life. And for those of us in Pledge Talk, when learning all that we are, it's the ultimate goal, is it not? So that we can be the best lovers in the way we communicate, in the way we relate, in the way we converse, in the way with our presence, we can be the best lovers possible to the very end. That's what Jesus is saying. He did this. He showed his love to his friends and disciples to the very end, to the fullest degree possible. Ultimately, we know even giving his life. Well, there's much more I could say here, but I think that's what I want to communicate uh, this morning as I'm contemplating this passage. My open prayer for myself, my open prayer for you, is that we can continue to learn how to love well and love well to the very end. And then, know with certainty, we're just going to transition to another one. That's all for now. This is Mark Olsey with Punch Talk.